What is going on fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today I'm going to show you how you can implement UI in your Godot XR VR game. So we're going to continue on with the series we did before. If you haven't watched the previous videos, the uh, link will be to the first video will be down below. If you want the source code for this project, it will be on my Patreon. Uh, you get access to all the previous tutorials that we've uploaded on there. There's a bunch of different tutorials, all the source codes there, and there'll be other behind the scenes stuff, so you can support the channel that way. But anyway, let's get on with this tutorial. So let's start off with what we're gonna do. So we're gonna be building a near simple UI where you can actually implement into your VR game. You can have it do what you want, but I'm just gonna show you how you can actually show UI in your games. It's not as straightforward as other game engines like Unity, uh, for XR that is and uh, VR stuff you actually have to do it in a different type of way using a the XR tools plugin or system uh, component for it essentially so I'm just going to show you the demo I've got and yeah we're going to try this out where is my other hand apparently it's all the way over here there it is all right so you can see here I'm in the world we built in the last tutorials the, the sun seems to have moved for some reason so everything's a bit out of whack you can see the shadows are a bit harder and everything seems to be out of whack. We can still get this up in the air. However, we can now interact with UI. So you can click start game. We can grab this slider and move slider. We can open this and I can... Oh, I almost not go for my mic. Uh, we can type on this. Um, but I, if you want to have a keyboard show in the world, you'd probably have to do some sort of custom solution for that. Uh, if that interests people and want to know, I'll probably create a separate video on that in the future on how you can do that. Well, I can jump high. Um, but yeah, that is, that's essentially what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So let's just get this straight off and get straight into it. Um, so first things first is it's not as simple uh, uh, that it just works with those pointer layers. As you see here, we have this function pointer. So I'm just going to delete this from our hands. So this is what we were left with in the last tutorial. So now on the left hand, I'm going to press Control Shift A to add in a new uh, child. And we're going to look for our Godot XR tools. And what we want is the pointer function. Now we can add this here and there's a bunch of different settings here. You can change offsets, you can change the button to actually trigger it. Um, obviously the trigger, the top uh, on the quest, these two trigger buttons at the top is what actually triggers it. You could probably change it to be the a AX buttons if you wanted to, uh, but I, I like this one. Show laser, so you can actually show the laser up until the collide. So here, if you change it to collide, the laser will not go through things, it will only collide. So you may have seen in that tutorial or in the demo I showed you that the laser was actually going through the UI. With this, it should stop at it. Uh, laser length until collide. Um, so this will just basically, again, same thing now. I'm not sure what the difference between length and late show. Oh, so the laser will only show, sorry, so it'll only be visible when you're hovering over something that you collide with and the length of the laser will not go through it with this second option, that's my bad. Um, and then the target, you can actually turn this on, it's a little dot that appears where you're actually aiming. I don't like it that much, so I keep it off, but you can turn that on and try it off. And then the collision layer, so by default, you can see uh, the collision layers are off. So if you're missing your actual layer names, you can go to Project Tools, XR Tools, and Set Physics Layers. You should now have the actual names implemented here. So you actually see these now. And you can see we've got UI objects, pointable objects, and they're the ones which these are set to, um, which is also what the um, component we're about to use is also set to. And then suppression, I assume, I haven't tried this, is the mask where it will not actually work, or if you get too close to it, it won't work. I don't, I don't know about that one. I'll figure that one out and I'll let you know in the future. Uh, but yeah, this is this simply is. We can add it to this, and then we can also add it to the right hand. So function pointer, and we can also do the same changes here. Only when we collide, we want to show it, and we only want to show the laser up until the point of collision, the first collision. Um, and yeah, that's that. So we can save that, and that should now work for our hands, and this will work again. Now I'm going to hide the current UI I've done here, and I'm essentially just going to show you how you can actually implement it from scratch. So first thing you want to do is in your scene, wherever you want it, you want to search for a viewport 2D in 3D node. So this will create this node here and you'll see it's down here. Now on the right here, you have a few different things. You want the screen size. Now I like to set this to a physical size. So like a resolution, so like 1920 by 1080 or I like to go a bit smaller in world. So you can say something like 
Uh, let's go for 640 by 360, which you're going to see is quite big, um, which is fine, but I don't really want it to be that big. And you can see here the viewport size here. I, prop I set this also to be the same. Now, this is the actual resolution of that screen. This is the physical size. So you can go down to, let's say, three and two like it was before. If we zoom in here, it'll be this big. But I like to kind of match it to this. So let's go back to that 640 by 360. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, the transform and change its scale to 0 0.01. Sorry, 0 0.001. And that should give us a smaller little window here. Now you can see it's actually quite a bit smaller. So let's actually change this to be... 1280 by 768 which is a 1920 by 12 uh, 16 by 9 re resolution right uh and then i'm going to keep the viewport size around this i think we'll tweak this we'll have to tweak this now over here in the content you'll see the scene now this is going to be your game ui as you can see i actually have a ui scene here with a control node a rect a margin container uh, a, f a fee box and button, hate horizontal slider and a text edit. Now you can change this to be whatever you want. You don't, you can literally use how, you can style this UI however you want. You can throw in different nodes. You can make it look as good as you want. Uh, and then back here in the scene, all you do is you drag and drop it in there. And you can see it shows up here, but you can see it's only one now. What we want is it to kind of, UI should be like a light source coming out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to rendering and I'm going to change the unshaded mode to on. And there you go. You can see the difference there when I turn it on and off. You can see it just becomes full bright rather than affected by lights. If you want it to be affected by light, then please go ahead and tick this off. Um, I think filter makes it smoother. So you add some anti-aliasing. So you can see there, you can see it becomes smoother when I turn this on. Uh, and this, you can set it to opaque. So there'll be no transparency, which is better for performance, I believe. Scissor, which I think has to be a threshold. So yeah, you can see the more you turn it up, the more invisible it goes. Um, and yeah, and then you've also got transparent, which is the default, which will also allow some transparency. I believe if you add a material to this, it'll actually add, it's actually a background material. So you see here, it will change, it actually remove the unshaded property there, uh, but it would also give it the material of this. So if you went here and I assume change the albedo to let's say black, yeah, you can see that changes with the thing. We change it to red. It will change it. It will add like some sort of, you can see it's adding some sort of filtering going on there, which we don't want. Again, we just want this. Let's go back. Let's let's bring this up. And this is essentially all we need to do. This will now work in our game. We'll be able to click it. You can hook up these buttons. So here we can actually go into our game UI. And when we click one of these buttons, we can get it up you can actually get um, access to the information here through the scene um, to actually reference things or you can hook up to what I tend to do is I hook this up to a I hook this up to like a a global uh, class uh, so in projects you have the auto load classes uh, a singletons that's what they're called I hook this up to a singleton that controls UI like a UI manager or something like that. So when you click something in here, it will trigger something elsewhere, elsewhere and do different things because um, it's a lot easier to, you know, get in and out. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially how you get UI into your game. So if you want to add UI text or anything like that, you can literally go in and we can come in and tweak this. Let's, let's remove this. So let's just set this to be invisible for now because I don't want to mess around with the actual size. You can see in here, it's now invisible as well. So let's just, let's just try this out in VR to make sure it all works. Uh, and then, yeah, that's, let's actually get my hand. And there you go. You can see in here, if I can find my hand. So we actually have an error here. I'm actually unable to click it. You see it's stopping. I think, I believe that our other, <clears throat> so obviously I have this one here, which is sat just in front, which is causing the issue. Now I can fix this by selecting this and I believe turning off its process, disabling it, I think. Let's just give that a go. That should make sure it's not actually got any sort of thing. And there you go. You can see that it's now working. And look, we can slide this UI. We can put in here and I can type on my keyboard uh, whatever we want. And there you go. So you can see here, I've lost my hands. Whoa, my hands are back. 
And there you go, you can see it doesn't go through the laser, it actually sticks to it and you can use all of these. And you can hook all of this up to what you want using uh, signals or the singleton method as I said, or doing anything like that. In my own game, the XR Robot Tool for Do or Robot Death Vlog game I've been doing on streams, <laughs> if you've been following along, I've been using this technique and it works very well. Alright guys, so that is going to be the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and we did some UI stuff. Now if you want to see more in-depth UI in VR uh, with the Viewport 2D in 3D, like actually hooking it up and how you would use the singleton to actually work with it and interact with it or other ways you can actually interact with it, please let me know and I will do a more in-depth video. This just no for you to get your UI into a game. Everyone seems to struggle, I especially struggled to figure out how I actually displayed UI to start with. But once I've managed to display it, everything else just worked. And also in the next videos, I'm gonna probably be doing something more fun, like physical buttons where you can actually push in a button, we can use a joystick. Uh, there's a bunch of other things we can actually try out and use. So if you wanna see something like a joystick or a physical button you press in game rather than UI, then please let me know, I will implement that as well. Um, and then let me know whatever else you want to see inside of this tutorial. If there's a feature in a game you've seen before, like Beat Saber or another game like, uh, I forgot the name, Dead, Dead by Sinus, something, the, the zombie game, which is really good with a really popular TV show, Walking Dead, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, that's the game, I remember. If you want to see a feature from that or any sort of game, just let me know the feature, tell me why this and i will try and recreate it for you and show it off how you could do it in godot uh but yeah that's gonna be it for this tutorial i will see you in the next one peace out